What learning style am I? It was saying low uh, connection, so I didn't know if I was going to actually be on or not. Here's a big thing. A lot of the times when people are talking about learning about something new, trying something different, experiencing a new way of actually doing something, it all comes down to how do you learn it. And what I find, there's a lot of gurus right now on the scenes that can get quite distracting. One guru, like health, for example, someone will say to you, eat blueberries. And the next week, someone, some health professional will say, no, don't eat blueberries. Someone will say, eat strawberries. And if you're living in Australia, they've found nails and strawberries. So there's always differing, just temporarily, but there are always differing viewpoints on how things should be done. And so the same is true for gurus and personal development. One person might say, work 15 hours a day. Another person says, actually, no, you need a break once every 90 minutes. One other person says this. So how do you identify what learning style are you? And it's specific because back when I was working in corporate, that was my bread and butter. I used to work out how do I create programs for corporates and bridge the gap between where they were and where they wanted to be based on what problem there was. And this really gave me an aha moment. So I'm at a, a primary school about three weeks ago. My sister couldn't make it to her little daughter's, I don't know, student conference-led teacher something. You know, it's the end of year term and the students come in and they show parents, you know, this is what I did and this is what I did. And my little niece is in year six. So my sister couldn't go and she asked if I could go. And so I said, yeah, why not? I rock up. And of course, it's a student-led conference and the students have been told to have certain pieces of content, information that they've been working on, and to show that to the person that comes. And it was beautiful and it was really well done and nicely written and, you know, making sure that all it ticked all the, the boxes and crossed the T's and dotted the I's. And then after the student-led conference, which, you know, lasted about 15 minutes, uh, I was given a survey to Mark and it said, do I understand how the student learns? And I'm like, no, I don't understand how my niece learns. I don't understand if she's a visual learner, if she's auditory, if she's kinesthetic, if she's a mix of all. I don't understand any of it. I know she's done work, but I don't know if she was able to race through the work because her learning was catered to. I don't know if she struggled to do the work. I just know there's a finished product, but I don't know if the journey of learning was enjoyable or absolutely excruciating, painful, because she didn't enjoy it. And that wasn't discussed. So what that led me to think about was, well, how do we identify what learning style we are? Because if we can break down what learning style we are, then if you want to learn speaking, if you want to learn sales, if you want to learn finance, if you want to learn anything that you're interested in, you've got to have an interest in it. Then if you just work out your DNA, if you just decode what turns your brain on in terms of learning, then the journey could be so much more sooner, quicker, more effective. And it doesn't have to be every time you get up and speak or every time you have to do a sale or every time you have to do finance, every time you have to do math. It doesn't have to be this churning feeling that I hate it. So what that led me to think about was, okay, so how does my little niece learn? Because I'm just sitting there going, I have no idea how she learns. And then the teacher asked her, to get up and do an experiment. And it's an experiment that was prearranged. It was, you know, she knew what she was doing. My little niece knew what she was doing, but she got up there and rather than trying to look the part, show me her English work and show me her this work and her book review and all that, when she was doing the experiment, she was a lot more alive in tune and in control. In fact, after she did the experiment, she said to me, this part of the experiment didn't work. So I had to think fast and I did this instead. And here's what's really interesting. Can she do that in an exam if she was doing maths? Can she do that in an English test? Can she do that if she's writing a book review? But what led me to believe is that she's a kinesthetic learner, which means she learns experimentally. She learns by doing, by touching, by, by feeling, by doing actual activity. Other students might learn by just watching. Like if I can just observe you and observe what you do and how you do it, I could learn pretty well. Other students are auditory, and we're all students, are auditory learners. We learn by listening. And then there are those of us who are a mix of all three, auditory, kinesthetic, and visual. But how does that apply to you and I? Now that we're not at school, now that we're not doing those exams, quote unquote, in the first day of HSC, I'm so glad I'm not doing it. Um, those who are not doing it, how do we break that down for you and I? So the first thing I want you to do to learn what learning style you are, because if you can crack the code, 
on what learning style you are specifically, you won't have to listen to all those gurus that say, do this and do that. You will naturally gravitate to what you are given the capability to do rather than forcing yourself, right? So I want you to think of a time, okay? So you're going to have to just think back for a little bit. Think of a time when you were able to grasp something really well, like it didn't take a lot of effort. You may not have done it very well. You may not have executed. You may not have been perfect. But think of a time when you were able to do something really, anything, whether you were five, whether you were five months, whether you were 50, whatever age you were, think of a time when you learned something and it happened really naturally, whether it was cooking, whether it was a specific recipe, whether it was writing, whatever it was for you, think of that moment. And I want you to reverse engineer that. Now, reverse engineer is a fancy pants word for I want you to go back in your steps and think what, what, what happened to make that easy? What happened to make that learning easy? Because I know for a fact that when I do certain things, it's hard for others. And when others do something, it's hard for me. So, for example, I could never be an accountant. I would never want to be an accountant. But then again, I don't have the love or inclination for sitting behind a desk and just working routine work. Someone else does because their learning style caters to that profession. Their learning style caters to that profession. Whereas me, completely not. But I need to be understanding of how I learn because that will indicate to me what my skill sets are and then I just run after my skill sets rather than trying to be over here and trying to master something that I really don't have love but I feel like I have to do. So what I want you to do is reverse engineer that moment in time when you learnt something that came to you quite easily. So let me give you an example. When the first time I ever spoke, the first time I ever spoke in my life, I was at school. I was in year 11. And I can't remember if it was the first time, but the first time I seriously took it seriously. And here's the funny part. And the story goes a lot longer, but I'm going to give you the short version of it. I rock up, I go, it was the plain English speaking competition. I'm like, I'm gonna go and try out for the English speaking competition. First year I did, sorry, I was year 10. And I go into the tryouts room and all the seniors are there, year 11s and 12s. And I'm like, I got so scared, I'm in year 10. I'm like, I can't compete with year 11s. Like they're so much bigger than me. And so much, you know, bigger than me. No, I'm just joking. They were so much bigger than me in height. I have to be honest about that. And I can't, I was just too scared to compete. So I walk out of the room and I said to myself, next year, I'm going to be a senior and I'm going to compete. I'm going to rule the school because I'm going to be a senior next year. So next year comes and I'm going into the plain English speaking competition tryouts. And I walk into the room and there's no one there. There's nobody there. And I'm like, is today the day? Is today the lunchtime that we're supposed to meet for the tryouts? I don't know. So we're... And all of a sudden, Mrs. Batchen walks in, the English teacher who's looking after the competition. And I go, oh, Mrs. Batchen, is today not the competition? She goes, of course it is, Rita. Congratulations, you're the winner. I'm like, well, what, what do you mean I'm the winner? She goes, no one else showed up. You showed up. Congratulations, you're going to regionals. And I am packing it. I'm packing it to go. Now, long story short, there's a lot that goes on in between this. Regionals come. Like, There's a lot that happens between now and regionals, and maybe I'll do another video on that. Because every time I tell the story to my, um, to my friends, I just crack up laughing. Regionals comes and I have I do not have a speech. I have not, do not have a speech because I, I don't even know if I'm good enough to speak. I didn't even try out for it. I just made it to the regionals because nobody else showed up. So I'm going there and the regionals is at a boys school. I, go, I went to an all girls school, Strathfield Girls. And the regionals is at Homebush Boys High School. And the schools from all the regions are going to be there. And just to put salt on the wound, my teacher, Mrs. Batchen, Invited all my school friends that she knew were my friends, invited them to the regional so they could see me embarrass myself live on stage one time only. So I don't know what I'm going to talk about. All I know is that I basically sat down on the chair in the auditorium and I said to Mrs. Batchen, who was sitting next to me, making sure that I wouldn't escape, I said to her, Mrs. Batchen, I have to go to the bathroom. And I literally did because I thought I was going to just like pass out. And so I run to the bathroom and I had a, a note, little notebook and a pen in my pocket <laughs> because I'm like, I'm, I'm going to try and write a speech. Well, and it's a boys' toilet. It's a boys' high school, so I can't go to the boys' toilet. I'm in the teacher's toilet and I'm scared because if a teacher catches me, I've got to be out there. 
So I'm quickly scribbling down anything, anything, any word that I can actually put into a sentence in my head, I'm just writing it down. I don't know what I was writing. I should have actually kept that notebook, but I was happy to throw it away. And I'm just writing and I'm writing and, I, and as I'm writing, I think to myself, how long have I been in this bathroom for? How long have I been in here? Has my time, has my turn come and gone? And is someone looking for me? Is there a search party? I have no idea. So I'm freaking out and I run out of the bathrooms. And as I'm running out, a teacher walks in. I'm like, missed that one. And I go up, sit down, sit on the chair in the auditorium. And I'm like, as I'm sitting and other, other people are talking, I'm just going to go through my notes. Okay, I'm just going to go through because I don't know what I've written. I'm just like... Bzz. And as soon as I open my note to just go through what I've written because I can't even remember, the MC of that competition says, and our next speaker is Rita Joyan from Stratfield Girls High School. And, I, and all my friends are like, yay, Rita! And I'm just like, oh, I'm about to just fall over. So I get up and my teacher, Mrs. Batchen, she's like, like she knew, she knew I had nothing, but she let me go through this, okay? And she's, Mrs. Batchen's like, okay, so I'm getting up there. And Mrs. Batchen was a great teacher, by the way. But anyway, I get up and I have no hurry to get on that stage because I'm about to fall flat on my face and why am I going to rush that? So I take my sweet time. I take it so long to get to the stage that the claps have died down. They're just waiting for me to get up there and just talk. So I'm just going really slowly and I can even feel, I'm going so slow that as I'm going up the stairs to the stage, I can feel the sole of my school shoes on each one of these stairs. And I'm just going... I'm not rushing nothing. <laughs> I've got all the time in the world. Heck, I might even be using up my time walking. They might just calculate this as the time of my speaking. So I get up there and I think I'm going to pass out. But I turn around because obviously I'm walking up the stairs and I turn around to face the audience. And I, all I remember, okay, because it was quite blurry from where I'm sitting right now, that image is quite blurry for me. I take a deep breath and I blow it out hard. And I just start to, I don't know what I'm saying. I just know I've got to feel some time. I'm going to just talk about anything. For, to this day, I have no idea what was coming out of my mouth. If it made sense, if it was English even. I don't even know. But I took up the seven, ten minutes, however I was supposed to talk for. I took up the time. And the audience graciously, kindly clapped for me. As in, get down from that on that stage and sit down which I did, and I sat, and as I'm sitting, I can just feel myself shaking, like I'm shaking like a leaf, like I'm shaking, like I just did that, like, oh my God, and my friends, like, how am I gonna face my friends? Forget everyone else, I don't know anyone else, but my friends, so I'm shaking, I'm shaking, shaking, but here's what I took away from the shaking, okay? The moment that I turned around and I took that big gasp of air is when I realized I actually love speaking. And I did not even say a word. And I had no idea what I was saying. And I didn't even come first, second or third. Heck, I made it to the regionals because no one showed up. But I realized that I enjoy speaking even though I was terrible and I had no idea what I was doing and I had no speech. Now here's how it, this is how it comes to learning. My learning style, and this is why you have to understand your own learning. And what I said to my little niece that day on her student-led conference is you have to, it's not important what you cover, it's more important what you discover about yourself. And that is absolutely, like it's gold. It's not important what you cover, that you cover English and you got 100% in maths or that. That's great. But long-term, I'm talking once you finish school, inshallah, once you finish it's more important who you discover you are because now you can mold what your skill sets are to the outside world. Because all you're trying to do at school is to get a good job. So why don't you surpass that and find, discover who you are, how you learn, so that anything you want to do, once you crack the code on how you learn, you can just accelerate that pace for yourself. So by telling you that story, I'm giving you an indication of how I learn. And I only recognize that I only recognize that because I put myself in a situation, or my, my teacher, Mrs. Batchen, did actually. She put me in a position where I couldn't back out. And what I realized is I learned best by going all in, embarrassing myself, 
hoping that it, nobody ever remembers, hoping my friends aren't there, but they were. And then from there, reverse engineering. And that's how I particularly learned. So for you, where was the moment in time that you got something? And what were the steps that led towards it? For me, it was making something, getting to regionals without earning it. Like I earned it because I showed up. Nobody else wanted to show up. The year before, the whole school wanted to do it. The next year when I wanted to do it, nobody was there. Being constantly thinking about and trying to put something into action. Thinking on the spot, being under pressure, that allows me to really pop. I didn't, wasn't successful at it, but I learned. I learned about myself. I didn't learn about speaking. I didn't learn about how to win a competition, but I learned about myself. And that's the greatest gift you can give if you can reverse engineer. Now, here's how I did it really recently, okay? I'll tell you how I did the same thing. Recently, we had a family wedding and he calls me up and uh, the groom, sorry, the groom who's a family member of mine calls me up and goes, would you MC my wedding? Now, I've spoken, I've done quite a few speeches, but I don't like emceeing. I've emceed once, I emceed um, a film competition, the 24 seven film competition. And I emceed that, and that was a little while ago, but I didn't enjoy it, like it was nice, it was good. But I was like, I'm never gonna emcee again, because you're running the show, and there's a lot of responsibility when you're running the show, you got things on time, things are, blah, 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 comes, blah. there's a lot going on. When you do a speech, it's you, it's your moment, it's that time, and then you sit down, and then you just leave it. But when you're an MC, you're like coordinating, like you have to be on top of everything. And plus, you get small snippets. I just want the whole stage, man. Anyway, so I, he asks me, can you MC my wedding? And I really had a tough time saying no. So I go, okay. So I MC the wedding and I think to myself, now that I've said yes, I'm like, well, I don't like MCing. I'm not good at MCing. And this is going to be recorded forever, like in family videos. This is going to be recorded forever. And so if I stumble, if I don't do a good job, it's going to be for everyone to see, like the whole world's going to know about it, like my whole family, like people that are important to me, like my parents, like my little nieces and nephews are going to know about it. And so I did the same thing. How do I learn best is I put myself in a position where I just, there's a pressure on. There's pressure, there's limited time for learning, there's a limited time for ex execution. And by that, I bring the best for what I have in that moment. And that's how I learn. You could be kinesthetic. You could be the type of person who learns by not just listening to a teacher or listening to a course or listening to a YouTube, but actually you, kinesthetically, if you're a kinesthetic learner, you're going to do this exercise. You're going to put down on paper a time, a moment in time when you learn really well, learned something well. doesn't mean you succeeded at it. It means you just got it. I got the fact that I enjoyed speaking. I got the fact that how I learn, how I actually understand that I enjoy something is I put myself under pressure. And then after doing that, you're going to reverse engineer what it takes for you to reach that. You may be visual. You may be watching me right now and you may be thinking to yourself as I'm talking, you may be backtracking in your own mind. How is it? What was a moment in time? And you're putting pictures in your head. Okay, there was a moment in time where I was, I don't know, you were maybe a first year out of the university and you did this and your pictures are coming to your mind about what you did. If you're an auditory learner, you're putting it through in terms of you're hearing what I'm saying, but in hearing it, you're hearing voices. You're not just hearing voices in woo-woo, but you're hearing as to how you specifically were able to get yourself from, I don't know what I'm doing, to understanding how you learn something, how you put things together, what did you hear, what were the voices, what was the internal dialogue that was being repeated, those things are coming to you. Just like my little niece, who I understood her learning style when she did the experiment because she was involved in it, she wasn't sitting there passively. And everyone's learning is different, which is why it's so important that if you want to master anything, and if what you're listening to one person's saying, do it this way. Another person's saying, do it that way. But how do you find the right way for you is to find your specific learning style. And I share two quick stories with you just so that you could see how I've applied it to myself and, well, actually three, my niece, and then how I've actually been trying to get her to see for herself to create that level of discovery of her own self. And the discovery doesn't stop after you finish school or after you finish year six. It's an everyday thing. But wherever you are in your journey, what learning style are you? Go back in time to a specific moment when you learned something and reverse engineer. What were the steps that got you to that learning moment? That learning moment and try and replicate that again. 
do the same thing again. Replicate that learning again to see how it actually triggers you and how it allows you to really get really clear and discovering what turns your mind on and what lights you up. And in doing so, whatever it is that you want to learn can become that more effective and efficient when you know your learning style. Catch you soon.